Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's garage, we continue our hands-on coating tutorial for Arduino displays using both OLED and LCD technology. In part one, we covered the steps to set up, hook up, and program the display to get it as far as displaying text. Today, we're going to add graphics in the form of lines and shapes, and it should look a little something like this when we're done. I'll also show you how to measure your drawing speed in frames per second, and when we discover ours to be a little slow, we'll speed it up by 500%. That's an optimization you don't want to miss, because it's as close to a free lunch in programming as you're going to get. But there's a catch, which I'll explain. So if you don't mind the little software and electronics, strap on in, because we're starting right now. Last time we were at the workbench, we covered the setup, hookup, and programming of OLED and LCD displays with the Arduino framework. Today we're going to take that the next logical step. Last time we did text. Today we're going to do graphics, such as lines, circles, basic figures. So hang on as we go from text to graphics. Okay, to get started, we're going to draw a box around the screen with draw frame. And then we're going to draw our pattern with lines. So we'll draw a border around the display, and as you can see, it supports height and width and a number of other metrics that you can get about the display, so you don't hard code things. I know you're thinking your display will never change, but it could. It's bad enough I'm going to throw in a couple margins, like two and four pixels here, which really should be like some high metric unit. And I'm not going to get that fancy because I don't want it to distract, but be as generalized as you can. Oh, come on, man. Where are the spaces? You're not going to leave it like that, are you? You've probably seen enough of me compiling code and watching it build, so I'm going to fast forward through some of these. But of course, that's only if there's nothing to be learned. If there's anything interesting going on, I will pause it. It's not a moray pattern yet. We need to space that out. We want to step by three or four or five, probably. I don't want a vertical line in the middle because it'll look too bold. Not my first rodeo. So stepping by four on a 128 display should give us 32 divisions with 33 lines. Well, there you go. That's kind of pretty. For two lines code. Let's fancy it up a little more so we can maybe use it in our thumbnail. You like that spacing better? So do I. Just testing. Let's go fix the other one, too. Ah, so much better. Unclean. Better. As a minor side note, I appreciate that they give me a circle API. Everybody else gives you ellipse only because you can make a circle with an ellipse, right? Uh, no, thank you. I like to draw circles. I've never drawn an ellipse in my life, I don't think. Format dialog? Nope, that's just properties. No, there's no, not a pie chart in the format dialog. So I've never drawn one. There's no need for ellipses. Remove them all. Clean the APIs. Okay, let me step you through this real quick, with what I think I'm doing anyway. Just gonna figure out where the middle of the screen is. I'm gonna figure out a good radius for our little target symbol. And we're going to then figure out the X by going over to the right hand side and then backing away from it based on how big the radius is. And then a little extra margin. Then we're going to draw a series of nested circles descending by three pixels each time until we get down to zero. Now we're going to draw a horizontal line through it and, oh, this is the vertical one, and then a horizontal line. And the reason for using these APIs is they're just faster and more efficient than the full generalized line draw algorithm which uses brazen ham to step through it, which you don't really need. And that comes back to sort of a philosophical point. It was bugging me a bit about calling get height and get width all those times. I would tend to cache those values somewhere. 
premature optimization is generally the root of all evil. So I'm not going to try and make this faster. It's just going to work nice. But I was getting kind of cluttered with all the height and width gets. So that was right on my borderline for me. Let's see if this code runs. Oh, it runs all right. It just looks a little wrong. Let me see. Oops. Typo. Medical Y. Are my lines in the right place? Well, I think the vertical one is, but the horizontal one is off. Looks like I reversed accidentally. Feels right. Kind of runs in my head, right? I mean, very little. All right, very pretty. Let's write some text and I'm gonna leave a spot where I can write a number so that we can do frames per second and find out how fast this thing actually redraws, if time allows. Will time allow? Oh, I think it will. Nope. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, you might have noticed a slight break in continuity there in terms of lighting and whatnot. And that's because we went long in the first episode, had to split it into two episodes, and this is where I pick up recording on a second day. So for you, nothing has changed. We're at the exact same point in the code, and we'll just pick up from here. Although now you hear a thunderstorm. And other important news along the way, if you've ever watched more than one of my videos, you've noticed an incessant beeping in the background, haven't you? Well, I finally found and fixed it. Long story, garage door opener, two batteries, one of them bad, replaced the wrong one, but. It's all fixed now. And I had just stopped hearing it and then somebody mentioned in the comments, I'm like, yeah, I bet you that is annoying. All fixed, my apologies. We would like to add some text and I want to print the frame rate of how fast we can draw this entire scene of the moray pattern and the box and the text. How many frames per second can we crank that out on I to C software? All right, let me quickly check and see if this does in fact draw the three lines of text that I'm hoping it does. It's been a while since I uploaded, so. Looks good to me. So for the next step, I'm going to split everything that is set up, one time set up, into the setup function, and everything that's going to loop repeatedly as we draw the frame over and over and over into separate code. And if you're wondering if I've added the Thunderstorm audio as some kind of ambient backtrack in order to give my code a sense of majesty and power, actually, no, that's a real storm. Now, of course, I can't have these delays in here while I'm going to be timing this. We'll just simply toggle the LED state every time we come through here. And to do that, I'll keep track of a variable. I'll invert it each time we come through this function, and I'll use that to set the LED pin. Good catch, but hang on, I'm not done yet. Okay, there we go. It's now drawing repeatedly and blinking the LED every time it does. You can see it, but as we discussed previously, I'm running this video camera at such a low frame rate to avoid flicker that you can't see the LED blink quickly either. So what I'm gonna do is turn up the frame rate for a moment so that you can see the LED flash, but you will see some flicker on the OLED. Can't have it all. Now you can see the LED will blink with regularity, but you get some flicker in the display. So I'm gonna go back to the less flicker but the less predictable blinking. It's just kind of unavoidable when you've got multiple different frame rates going on at the same time. So rather than relying on a somewhat subjective notion of how fast is the LED blinking, 
especially when you can't properly see it due to persistence, it's not the best way to track performance. So why don't we actually measure something and print it out using our fancy new display that we've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all the drawing code off to a function and then in the loop, I'm going to call that function repeatedly and blink the LED and then keep track in terms of frames per second of how fast it draws. And from there, we'll see if we need to speed it up at all. If you've not seen that before, it just means it's a forever loop because you're not doing any setup. It's never true, so it never finishes and it doesn't do anything in the increment stage. Daddy Carl. <laughs> I'm getting a little louder. I'm on a UPS, so. I'm not, Carl's not but the computer is. I'm going to take all of this code and cut it out of here and paste it into the function. Because we're coming through here repeatedly now, we don't want to clear the screen because that would create immense flicker. We don't have to clear the screen because when you write text, it actually erases the background of the character block you're writing. So we don't have to worry about text overwriting text and completely and that kind of thing. The lines are always gonna be drawn in the same place, so it's a little redundant, but it works for timing. Don't really need the home because I set the cursor right away, but just, I like to be tidy. So we're gonna clear the buffer and we're gonna set the cursor in the top left and then we're gonna start printing our and drawing our entire frame and we're gonna return and that's it. I do want to start displaying the frames per second. We don't know it yet, but this is where we will print it. Let's take a quick walk together through this file now, because we've changed the layout a little bit, and I want you to keep it in your head, as it were. So again, we have our constructor for the OLED itself. We keep track of the line height based on our current font. The setup function is going to set the pin mode to output for the built-in LED so that we can blink it. In the one-time setup, we call begin and clear, and we set the font because those are things that don't have to be done every frame. In the every frame case, I am setting home, even though it's a little redundant because I set cursor all the time anyway, but I hate leaving that kind of thing undefined, so I'm just putting it to zero, zero. I'm clearing the transmission buffer, and then we're just gonna draw our entire frame and ship it, or send it, I should say. Within the loop, we're going to blink the LED by setting it to whatever state it's currently not, then calling our draw frame code, and then just repeating. Soon, we'll keep track of how long it takes to draw this, but right now, let's just make sure this restructured file is actually working. Hey, it doesn't need to be static anymore, actually. Okay, looks the same, blinks the same. Restructured file works just as we hoped. Let's go in and keep track of how long it takes to draw that little frame of ours. So the first thing I'm going to do is record the start time of when we actually began drawing. So I'm going to call draw our lines and graphics frame with our FPS, which I will keep track of here for reasons I shall explain shortly. So what this function does, it records the starting time in a double precision floating point variable because the chip has floating point math. Every byte's not sacred, man. We're not under any memory pressure here yet. So we're gonna make it simple and readable by using double. Yeah, you could make it some kind of numerator denominator thing. So we record the start time, we draw the frame, we record the end time. The handy dandy frames per second function will go off and calculate basically the reciprocal of how long it took, which is the number of frames per second but it will handily keep track of it in a weighted average for us so it doesn't bounce around too much. The reason it has red squigglies is there is no such function and we have to write that function. So let's go do that now. Walk with me, would you?
the frames per second keeps track of its value as a weighted average. What that effectively means is it takes 90% of the old value, 10% of the new value, adds them together. It does that each time. That kind of preserves the old value. And maybe in the back of your head you're thinking, hey, that's cool, but how does it get started? Yeah, it doesn't. It starts out at zero. And it takes you know, up to 10 frames to build up the actual correct floating weighted average value. So keep that in mind when you're looking at it. And wait for it to stabilize. Also, spell it correctly. Well, that seems like a lot of code to work all at once, but we'll try it. We'll try it. Well, la dee da, it works. And it stabilizes right around five frames per second, which from experience is about what I would expect. And that's pretty hurting. If you're drawing a lot of information, you're gonna see this thing painting pretty obviously. Please note that the lightning storm is intensifying. Wow, what was that? That was a loud one, holy lick. So you might wonder, if it's so slow, why am I still smiling? because I know something you don't know. It supports I2C and hardware, not just software. So we can actually just switch the constructor on our OLED object, get it correct, flip it over to hardware mode, and it should run a fair bit faster because it's gonna offload all the work. Could it be a one letter change? Hardware to software, we'll just change the S to H and see the builds. And it does, but before we test it, because it would just not work anyway, remember what I said earlier in the last episode about how they swap around the order in the constructor of the clock and data lines from one to the next, just for fun. So I changed the letter S to H and it's not gonna work because if we go and look at this thing, it is now in the order reset clock data and we were in clock data reset, who knew? So let's fix that. We need to go reset clock data. Let's see what that does. What an easy win from five to 27 frames per second, just for changing one letter and no one to change the constructor order. I can perceive the blinking here, but it's gonna just look like a pulse with modulated value for you. It's just gonna be kind of a dimmed LED because it's flashing that fast now, which is why we have the handy dandy text display bouncing back and forth between 26 and 27. Well, that's a big enough win for today that I'm gonna leave this one right there. Good luck in your LCD and OLED adventures, and I'll see you on the other side. Well, I hope you found today's episode some combination of interesting and informative. If you did, I encourage you to let me know by liking and subscribing, and most importantly, turning on the bell notification so that you find out when the next episode comes out. Otherwise, this is such a small channel that you'll never likely stumble across it again, so please do pause and subscribe if you haven't already. If, on the other hand, you did not like this video, you can really send me a message by giving it the old double down vote. That always gets my attention. Join me next time as we take our next steps towards RGB LED glory as we start to build the tube of mystery. How does it work? Science doesn't even know, but I'll try to explain it. I paid 13 bucks on Amazon, so I, I don't want to drop it. Then I added my own LEDs and chip and coated up those sweet effects. I'll show you how starting in the next episode. Until then, thanks for watching and good night. Well, hello everybody. My name is Carl. C-A-R-L Carl. I'm the cameraman. Good night everybody. Don't forget to subscribe.